What if the first sign of Alzheimer's isn't forgetfulness at all, but quiet iron-driven damage that you can measure and act on before memory slips? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're focusing on excess brain iron, why it accelerates Alzheimer's pathology, and the specific steps you can take to check your status and reduce risk starting now. I'm Alara Skye. The research we're discussing compared healthy adults, adults with Alzheimer's, and adults with Alzheimer's related to Down syndrome. The group with both Down syndrome and Alzheimer's showed about twice as much iron in a key brain region for memory and decision-making, along with earlier and more aggressive disease features. Iron excess doesn't just sit idle. When iron reacts with fats and proteins in your brain, it sparks oxidative stress that destroys cell membranes and pushes amyloid toward toxic forms. In the study, lipid peroxidation was markedly higher where cognition is controlled, matching the clinical picture of faster decline when iron builds up. Protective systems were also missing where they were needed most. Enzymes that normally repair damaged cell membranes were reduced by as much as 70% in affected regions. The enzyme required to make glutathione, a frontline antioxidant, was diminished by up to 60%. Even if total antioxidant levels looked adequate, the defenses weren't present in the precise microzones under attack. The damage concentrated in lipid rafts, the control hubs of brain cell membranes, that's where proteins are processed and signals are relayed. Oxidation in these rafts altered processing of amyloid precursor protein, shifting output toward the toxic amyloid that accumulates and kills neurons. A major source of the excess iron appears to be microscopic brain bleeds you never feel. As blood breaks down in tissue, iron-rich compounds disperse and linger. The study found a cleanup enzyme tied to blood breakdown was roughly tripled in the Down syndrome Alzheimer's brains, a fingerprint of chronic microbleeding feeding a long-term iron load. Processing enzymes also change behavior under oxidative stress, the harmful cutting pathway for amyloid, driven by BACE1, became more active even without higher BACE1 levels. Meanwhile, the safer pathway via ADAM10 lost activity. Antioxidant enzymes rose overall, but not inside the lipid rafts where oxidation was concentrated leaving those hot spots exposed. Genes influenced iron accumulation as well. Individuals with Down syndrome variants lacking full duplication of the APP gene had considerably less brain iron, fewer plaques, and lived up to 20 years longer than those with full duplication. That pattern links APP overproduction to iron buildup, oxidative damage, and earlier decline. Translating this to action starts with measurement. You can test ferritin, the storage form of iron, and gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, GGT, a marker related to oxidative stress. Aim for ferritin between 60 and 75 nanograms per milliliter. When ferritin and GGT are both elevated, it signals that stored iron is more likely to contribute to damaging reactions. If your iron runs high, remove excess safely. Donating blood two to four times a year is one of the most effective ways to bring ferritin down over time. If donation isn't appropriate for you, ask your clinician about therapeutic phlebotomy to achieve the same iron reduction goal. Balancing copper is another step, because copper and iron metabolism are tightly linked. If your intake is low, consider 3 to 4 milligrams of copper bisglycinate daily. You can also focus on copper-rich foods such as bee pollen, grass-fed beef liver, and acerola cherries. Retinol, found in beef liver and other organ meats, supports your capacity to use copper effectively. Calcium intake from food helps keep iron in check. When calcium is too low, your parathyroid hormone rises and iron storage increases. You can emphasize raw grass-fed dairy, pasture-raised egg yolks, and powdered eggshells as whole food sources. Skip synthetic calcium supplements unless medically necessary since they don't carry the same cofactors for absorption and regulation. Fat quality matters because iron reacts aggressively with unstable fats. Removing vegetable oils, canola, soy, corn, sunflower, safflower, and similar oils 
reduces a key substrate for oxidative damage. Replace them with stable fats like grass-fed butter, ghee, coconut oil, and tallow. At the same time, support glutathione production with foods such as garlic, onions, and pasture-raised eggs. You can also add molecular hydrogen to your routine. Hydrogen, via hydrogen-rich water or tablets, helps restore glutathione activity when oxidative stress is high. This supports your antioxidant defenses where they've been overwhelmed, including those vulnerable membrane regions. Taken together, these steps target the drivers highlighted by the research. Too much stored iron, weak localization of antioxidants, and unstable fats that accelerate peroxidation. Testing guides the plan, donation or phlebotomy lowers the load. Copper and calcium from food improve regulation. Fat quality reduces reactions and hydrogen helps restore defenses. You don't need to wait for symptoms to act. Alzheimer's doesn't start with memory loss. It starts with measurable damage. If you have a family history or you want a preventive baseline, checking ferritin and GGT, reviewing your kitchen oils, and aligning mineral intake with food can move you out of the highest risk pattern the study described. Make the sequence simple. First, order ferritin and GGT. Second, if ferritin is above target, schedule blood donation or speak with your clinician about phlebotomy. Third, audit your pantry and remove vegetable oils the same day you get your labs. Fourth, introduce copper-rich foods and whole food calcium sources. Fifth, add garlic, onions, and pasture-raised eggs regularly to support glutathione. If you choose to include molecular hydrogen, integrate it alongside these dietary moves. The aim is to reestablish glutathione activity and protect those lipid rafts while you lower stored iron. Small, consistent changes begin to shift the biochemical environment that fosters amyloid toxicity. Keep your focus on what you can quantify and change if ferritin gives you a number to track. Pantry choices are fully within your control. Mineral balance comes from specific foods you can plan and repeat. The evidence points to iron-driven damage starting early and concentrating in precise membrane zones. Your plan should meet it there. Here's your challenge. This week, get ferritin and GGT tested. Clear vegetable oils from your kitchen and choose one copper-rich food and one whole food calcium source to add to your meals. If ferritin is high, book a blood donation. Start today so you can reduce iron-driven risk and reinforce your brain's defenses. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.